we're talking about catastrophes. We're talking about things that we do that I see in my, I'd rather not say, but maybe upwards of 30 years of IT experience, the things that I often see that uh, customers do wrong. Now, I'm not jumping up on my high horse here. I also include myself in that category. I've been an Oracle customer even, and I consider myself still an Oracle customer, even though I work for Oracle, we use the technology. And sometimes you know, we encounter bugs, but sometimes we encounter problems of our own making. I need to spend a moment, a little bit of a few minutes on, on pontificating about why I thought a talk in terms of mistakes uh, was important. And this is, you know, one of my sort of funny meme slides that I see from time to time on the internet when people make mistakes and the shipment of fail has arrived or hashtag fail you see on Twitter and all sorts of things is generally we're very reticent, very hesitant to talk about failure. And I think that's a bad thing because the reality is if you go to a conference and people talk about all the successes they've had, you know, we did this and it was fantastic. Or we use this facility, we use this feature and we use it brilliantly. And, and we're pulling in this many transactions a second, and this many new customers and this much revenue, etc. Generally, that kind of stuff helps the person doing the talking. They're talking about how they prospered. But the reality is, I think the opposite is true as well. If you talk about failure, then rather than it being just about oneself, it actually helps everyone. Because Failures are generally cautionary tales. And even as children, you know, our parents generally tell us cautionary tales about how to avoid getting into trouble. And that's why I think failure is actually a much better thing to talk about because generally it helps us as a community such that one person who inevitably was the, maybe the pioneer who had to encounter some sort of pain or, or suffering and, and failure, that lesson makes hundreds or thousands or millions of customers be able to avoid that pain by sharing that story. If we have too much vanity and we don't want to share stories of failure, then what happens, of course, is that repeated people have those failures. I suppose the best way of so describing this is avoid. I want to, in terms of breaking the success Phrase hierarchy, this. to help explain what I mean by the success hierarchy, is we often see this kind of demographic inside the IT community. We have developers who you know, maybe up to report to DBAs or admins, then team leads, project managers, directors, et cetera. And failure is one of those terrible things where it's like a, the game of what we used to call Chinese whispers here in Australia, which is failure gets diluted as it works its way up the chain. So a developer might have some catastrophic problem. You know, I've shipped some code to production and I've suddenly realized this is an absolute disaster. It's gonna corrupt the data. The DBA, generally, DBA and developers work at the same level. They're going to be very, they're going to report up the chain saying, yep, oh my God, oh my goodness, the, the data is all corrupt. Now, the team lead doesn't want to report that up the chain because it makes him look bad or her look bad. So he'll go, oh, to his manager, you know, we've got some data corruption, but we've got some challenges, but we're, we're tackling it. And of course, the project manager, same thing, doesn't want to report, be reporting up the chain to say, we've got a cataclysmic issue here. So they'll say, we've got some issues with data quality. The director says, we're moving forward with some data challenges as he reports up the chain. And as the position you report to gets more and more senior, the risks associated with reporting failure get higher and higher. And so you start getting these, you know, we're maximizing opportunities in the data space. And at which point the CEO is reporting to the shareholder saying everything is just A-OK. -okay. And that's that dilution of failure because everyone's so scared about reporting failure. So my motivation is to report more on failure so we don't get this kind of scenarios in your own customers where you're banging the drum saying we have a problem and that just continually gets diluted down and filtered away until bad things happen. I can give you a real life example. I worked for a place which shall remain nameless. I won't even talk about the field of work they were in. Many, many years ago, I worked at a place where a project literally ran off the rails and over the course of two years, when it finally made it up to the point where it was meant to go live, they realized that A, they were like years away from ever delivering and they were $2 billion in the hole, $2 billion in debt on this project. By the time the CEO finally got an uh, honest report saying, yep, things have actually gone really bad. The warning signs were there for those two years, but no one was prepared to report their challenges up the line until it finally got to the CEO he had to report to the shareholders saying, 
we're not ever going to deliver this project and we've burnt two billion dollars and he actually got forced to resign that's the the net end of not being able to report failure up the line and i want to stress that failure does not necessarily mean negligence mostly most of us don't go to work thinking i'm deliberately going to make a mess of my systems we just unfortunately make mistakes really it comes down to poor decision making we make bad decisions and we get into some failure and i thought it was particularly pertinent to talk about failure in the in the uh, concept of decision making nowadays because if you've been to any of the autonomous talks that we've been spilling out over the past 18 months or so we've been talking about your changing role as an it professional it's not necessarily just doing technical work anymore that's still there but you know you hear about all this autonomous 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 what happens now is dbas and developers are much more focused in decision making now they're the people being asked what tech should we use what gear should we use what what cloud should we use etc you're making big calls on the sake of your business and your business customers and obviously you'll be held responsible for them so poor decision making is particularly pertinent uh, today the responsibility is now ours what i'm emphasizing is the importance of failure and the importance of us being able to share our failures with others my favorite example of this is i went to a talk many many years ago given by an amazon dba and they spoke about the fact that they inadvertently set the max extents unlimited facility on the bootstrap dollar segment which is the very first segment the database reads when you actually start the database Next time they bounced their database, which was three months later, long after this had been long forgotten, the database wouldn't start. And this is one of Amazon's most famous outages way back in the day, where literally they were down for two days. And obviously the media were all over them because they had to get actually some internal help from Oracle Sport to come in and actually hack their database dictionary to actually fix this. They actually had to do some binary editing of files because I'd inadvertently set max extents unlimited to a special internal table. How do we know about this? The Amazon DBA gave a talk about it. That's what I like, the concept of sharing failure. That was a lesson that said to every single person on the planet who runs a database, don't ever do this. It's absolutely terrible. 